the Koreans look to make up on lost time with the extra revert Kona compact SUV What is IT? The Kona draws a bead on the best compact SUVs, cars like the Mazda CX-3 and the Toyota CHR, offering a distinctive look, sturdy mechanicals, an attractive warranty and stacks of gear. Two engines, two chassis layouts and three trim levels deliver plenty of customer choice. Why we're testing IT The bar in the compact SUV class has been jacked up pretty high in the last couple of years, so we're curious to see if Hyundai can score a meaningful hit on what's become a fast-moving target. Main rivals are Honda HRV, Mazda CX-3, Mitsubishi ASX, Subaru 15, Toyota CHR The wheels verdict if you're a harsh marker, ITD be hard to escape the conclusion that the Hyundai Kona moves the compact SUV game on in no particular regard. Some rivals are bigger, some are better looking. You can buy cheaper and you can choose other models that are better to drive. Where the Kona scores is in delivering enough on every key buying criterion to lever itself into contention. It's an endearing thing that has no serious vices and which promises a temptingly hassle-free ownership experience. That ought to be enough to guarantee success but, given how late it is to market, ITD be understandable if you expected more. Plus bold styling, interior space, 1.6T engines zest, equipment on up spec models minus inelegant body control, unadventurous interior, space saver spare, odd spec emissions The wheels review when asked whether the Kona could hope to beat the sales of rivals like the Mazda CX-3 and Mitsubishi ASX, Hyundai Australia's chief executive, J.W. Lee, appeared momentarily affronted. Why not he shrugged, regathering his composure. It's a better car. Confidence is clearly not in short supply. Timeliness, on the other hand, is. Since 2011 there's been a massive explosion in the Aussie compact SUV market, registrations increasing from less than 20,000 to more than 90,000 cars per year. As Hyundai's Japanese rivals carved up this lucrative pie between them, the Koreans sat on their hands. Lee used the example of Netscape Navigator, one of the first web browsers, as a case study, citing that it had then been overtaken by Johnny Comma lately such as Internet Explorer, Chrome and Firefox. The thing is, in order to replace the incumbent champ there needs to be some demonstrably superior point of difference. At first acquaintance, the Kona struggles to express such obvious superiority. Based on a modified version of the PD platform that underpins the i30 hatch, it's a distinctive-looking thing, with striking body armor, a chunky, purposeful stance, a sleek glass house and neat detailing such as the split daytime running lights and main driving lamps. It has top notes of Citroen about some of the styling flourishes, albeit ones that have been toned back a few degrees. At 4,165mm in length, 1,800mm in width and 1,565mm in height, the Kona's 110mm shorter than a CX-3, but boasts a 30mm longer wheelbase and measures 35mm wider too, resulting in a cabin that feels area. The flip side of this is that with the wheels pushed out to each corner and passenger cell space prioritized, luggage space suffers. Except that it doesn't, the Kona delivering 361 litres with the rear seats in place, compared to the Mazda's 350 litre capacity. Both cars use a space saver spare to do this, rather undermining the Kona's outdoorsy brief, especially as the i30 hatch gets a full-size item. Buyers get to choose between a 110 kilowatts 2.0 litre normally aspirated engine, paired with a front-wheel drive. Chassis in a six-speed automatic gearbox or, if you're feeling a few grand flusher, a 130 kilowatts 1.6 liter unit with all-wheel drive underpinnings and a seven-speed twin-clutch transmission. Hyundai also offers three trim levels, Active, Elite and Highlander, and all of these trims are offered with either engine. Strictly speaking there are three and a half trim levels, as the entry-level Active can also be specified with a $1,500 SmartSense safety pack which includes a suite of features such as blind spot monitoring, rear cross-traffic alert, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, AEB, driver attention warning and, as a bonus, heated and folding door mirrors. The Elite trim features this pack as standard, the alloys grow an inch to 17 inch, and you get leather, climate control, keyless go, and some slicker exterior garnishes amongst others. The top Highland trim gets the options list shoehorned in, with a new to Hyundai head-up display, 18 inch wheels, a 4.2 inch color TFT supervision cluster between the dials, heated and ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, LED lights and a Qi wireless phone charging pad.
Prices start at $24,500 for the entry-level 2.0 Active and top out at $36,000 for the 1.6T Highlander. The 1.6-litre turbo engine, a similar unit to that found in the bigger Tucson, feels peppy when asked to shunt 1,414 kg of Kona up the road and the sprint to 100 km per hour will detain you for just 7.9 seconds. With 265 newton meters arriving at just 1,500 revolutions per minute, it rarely feels short of zip, but the twin-clutch transmission can be a little reluctant to downshift in automatic mode, even when set to sport. At times, it seems as if the car is deliberating on its transmission, rear axle deployment and electronic stability control strategies before finally deciding upon a solution some way after corner exit. With no wheel-mounted paddles, keen drivers will recourse to the stick pulling back to change down the box. The 2.0-litre engine that 80% of buyers will choose is a good deal more vocal when pushed but the six-speed automatic feels a suitable partner, giving the front-wheel drive car a relaxed loping nature. Here, 100 km per hour arrives in 10 seconds and the arrival of peak torque is a similarly languid affair, the 180 newton meters serving waiting until 4,500 revolutions per minute to make an appearance. Peak power is at a nosebleed 6,200 revolutions per minute, a zone on the Tacho you'll rarely feel inclined to explore. Both cars feature a drive mode select switch that shuffles between Nico, Comfort and Sport modes. This alters transmission shift points, steering weighting, throttle and engine maps but doesn't back off the stability control settings. Delivering a definitive verdict on ride quality proved to be a tough assignment. Many of the test vehicles were riding on necks and tires, which were noisy and unimpressive in terms of grip. Hyundai maintains that customer cars will get Hankooks for 16 and 18-inch wheel choices and Continentals for 17-inch rims. The Contests we tried were a far more impressive set of rubberware, quelling road noise and offering a more malleable feel when cornered hard. At this point it's worth pointing out that the front-drive Kona and the all-wheel-drive model have very different rear suspension architectures. The front-driver gets a cheaper and simpler torsion beam rear end, while the all-poor variant gets a more sophisticated dual-arm multi-link arrangement. That said, Hyundai has done a good job in tuning the torsion beam and in everyday driving there's not a lot to choose between the two. Only a modest increase in noise from the luggage bay differentiates the two. Ride quality is firmish but not intrusive, only sharp road imperfections sending a jolt through the superstructure. Body control is about on a par with a Mitsubishi ASX, the Kona lacking that chuckable teardown junior hot hatch feel of a Mazda CX-3. Much has been made of the Aussie-tuned suspension, the local chassis team going through 13 different front and 29 rear shock absorber combinations and appraising two different stabilizer bars, but fitting non-production standard tires then renders this largely moot from a tester's perspective. The electrically assisted steering has a quick ratio but feels gluey as you wind on more lock. The brakes are beyond reproach, with an excellent pedal feel and strong performance. The cabin will be familiar to most i30 drivers, offering much the same basic architecture, with a few changes to the HVAC controls and the instrument cowling, making space for the Highlander's head-up display. Space in the rear is very good for a car of this size, two six-footers easily able to sit in tandem. Front headroom is also excellent and aside from the inconveniently zitted starter button on upper spec models, the ergonomics are sound. Many manufacturers could learn a few lessons in wheel-mounted controls from Hyundai. Intriguingly, no version of the Kona comes with built-in sat-nav. Hyundai has decided that most users prefer to port the nav from their phones, all cars being fitted with standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. The voice control button on the steering wheel then directly interacts with Siri or your friendly droid, marshalling many of the phone on music selection functions. Identifying the sweet spot in the Kona range is tough. If pushed, it'd nominate entry-level 2.0 litre and all the bells and whistles for the 1.6T version. The latter pushes pricing up towards Hyundai Tucson Elite levels, which could prove a diversion. For what it's worth it's also a little north of Mazda's ranger-topping petrol engine CX-3 Akari, which will doubtless raise a few eyebrows. We're looking forward to getting these contenders into a head-to-head -head at some point in the not-too-distant future. The Kona certainly has enough about it to give the baby Mazda something serious to contend with. While it may not leap straight to the top of the class, I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot of these on Aussie roads very soon.
despite its chief exec's bold proclamation, that's something Hyundai Australia looks set to be content with. The Kona might have been late to the party but, hey, if you're there before it's over, you're on time. Specs model Hyundai Kona 1.6T Highlander engine 1591cc 4CYL DOHC 16V turbo max power 130 kilowatts at 5500 rpm max torque 265 newton meters at 15 million 4500 rpm transmission 7 speed twin clutch weight 1414 kilograms 0100 kmh 7.9 sec economy 6.7 L 100 kilometers claimed price $36,000 on sale now.